boards presented by BYK will be starting in just a moment. We're going to let everyone get logged in and then we'll get underway with our program. And good afternoon, everyone. Again, we'll be getting started in just a moment. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. My name is Garrett Sheehan, and I am president of the Quinnipiac and Greater New Haven Chambers of Commerce. Welcome to our annual Women's Achievement Awards celebration. We are so glad to have all of, uh, all of you online with us. We're excited to recognize the achievements of the exemplary slate of honorees in our region, women in leadership roles that are making a difference in the workplace and in our communities. To get us kicked off, we're excited to present Lenady Hanau, who will sing God Bless America. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam God bless America my home sweet home God bless America And thank you, Lenady. Uh, great rendition, beautiful voice. Uh, and Lenady's sister was an intern here with us at the Chambers of Commerce as well. Well, at the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce, we are fortunate to operate in a region where chief elected officials are supportive of business. They understand the needs of business and our community and have responded by continuing to invest in Wallingford and North Haven. We welcome in now this morning, or this afternoon, I should say, Wallingford's Mayor, Bill Dickinson, who is with us on the phone. Mayor, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? <laughs> I can. Great to hear you. Great. All right. Yes, Wallingford greetings to Lieutenant Governor Bysowitz, of course, you, Garrett, and the Chamber staff, my good friend and colleague, Mike Frieda, and Chamber members. You know, on a television show, Paul McCartney of the Beatles spoke about he and John Lennon wrote the Beatles hit song, She Loves You, in McCartney's family home. He said, we finished the song up, just the two of us, and we thought, that's it, let's play it. Hey, my dad's here, I'll get him and we'll play it for him. So I asked my dad, wanna hear a song? And he said, okay. So we sang, she loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he listens to the whole song. Then he said, that's very nice. But you know, there's enough of these Americanisms around. Couldn't you just sing, she loves you, yes, yes, yes. Well, today, whether it's a yeah or a yes, we join together and celebrate and honor the achievements of Nanette, Sherry, Evelyn, Lorraine, Emily, Anne, and Samantha. You are the talented, caring leaders we truly need. Working in real estate, private business, education, health care, and our YMCA, we are very pleased you are receiving these awards 
and we, yes, yeah, yes, love the way you inspire us and bring leadership in our communities. Congratulations. Mayor, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate the support for the chamber and your support for this event as well. And now uh, it's my pri privilege to introduce the first selectman of North Haven, Mike Frieda. Mike, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Karen. And, and ladies and gentlemen, how do I follow my colleague, Mayor Dickinson? So I want to just say, uh, echo what he said earlier about welcoming our Lieutenant Governor. It's always great to see our Lieutenant Governor, Susan Weiselitz, and Garrett, all the members of the chamber, and everyone on this call. I have to say that uh, every year, this is one of my favorite events. It's one of my favorite events because it gives us in North Haven, and as Bill said in Wallingford, a great deal of delight, pleasure, and pride seeing our women leaders in our respective businesses and industries across this region. And you know, every year, the chamber comes forward with wonderful women who've made contributions to our community, to their companies, and their institutions, and uh, those that they serve. But in these turbulent times, with what we're going through in a pandemic, with what we see out there, people lacking hope, people who have anxiety, each of you, in my mind, who are the recipients of this award today, and Bill mentioned the names, have demonstrated that each of you represent individual powerful symbols, a symbol of what can be done with staying focused and serving our communities, your companies, your institutions. And it's great for me to see that because we as municipal leaders need more leaders like you to be ambassadors in our communities, to help demonstrate that there are some good things that can happen. And I thank each and every one of you for what you've accomplished this past year. I'm very proud of each and every one of you. And it's always my pleasure to be part of this event, working with the chamber, and I appreciate everything that each of you do. Thank you very much and congratulations to all. And thanks, Mike. Great job following up. I mean, that did sound a little bit like the Beatles song, Come Together. So if you want to sing that, go ahead. But uh, no, we appreciate it. And uh, thank you for your time. Um, and I do just want to mention that we will have uh, Mike Frieda and Mayor Dickinson join us uh, for our State of the Towns on February 18th with the Quinnipiac Chamber. So make sure you uh, come around for that. Uh, just a reminder to all of our attendees, please stay for the entire program and be eligible for one of three prize giveaways, including the grand prize drawing a donation by Arnold's Jewelers of North Haven. Uh, one of the companies that has been so tremendously supportive of our efforts this past year is our presenting sponsor, BYK USA. We could not produce such an event without their support. Please welcome Allison Avery, the CEO of BYK, to say a few words. Allison, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Unfortunately, no Beatles songs from me. But uh, it gives me great pleasure as the representative for BIC, the presenting sponsor, to give a few introductory words of welcome to this special and important event. I always find it incredibly inspiring and motivating to hear about the achievements of some super women in our community. I find it pushes me a little bit to reach a little higher or set that foot a little further outside the comfort zone. So from my personal perspective, I really look forward to hearing about each of the winners today, and I hope to be able to meet and congratulate you all in person in the not too distant future. But BIC doesn't just sponsor this event because I find it very inspiring and important. At BIC, we're great believers in diversity and committed to supporting the local communities we're in. As a company, we're constantly faced with new challenges and situations to deal with, and we recognize that having different perspectives, strengths and skills that diversity brings in our organization really helps us to respond and change in positive ways. Being able to turn some of those challenges into opportunities and consequently making us a more resilient organization. Something very valuable in today's world and something I'm sure we would all like to see in our communities and institutions. But also at BIC, we realize that it requires a little effort to get there. So BIC is a German owned chemical manufacturer and I would be the first to admit that although BIC is a fantastic place to work for anyone, especially women, 
it isn't perhaps every woman's obvious dream place to work and therefore achieving diversity needs a little nurturing. So BIC, we're really delighted to be able to support this event and I would like to thank the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce for organising and hosting it, as well as the other sponsors and every one of you attending today. Recognising and celebrating the wonderful achievements and efforts of the women being honoured here today is doing our bit to nurture diversity in our wider community, which will undoubtedly benefit us all. So with that, I would like to say thank you again to the Chamber, the other sponsors and all of the attendees, and I really look forward to hearing from each of the winners. Thank you. Thank you, Alison. We appreciate it. Let me now welcome in Gary Carleglio. He's our Senior Director of Sales and Marketing at the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce. Uh, Gary, along with Maribel, they've kept the chamber operating. You've heard from them over the last several months, and we're extremely appreciative of their efforts. Gary? Thanks, Garrett, and uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, this event would not be possible without the support of our event sponsors. Your unwavering commitment, dedication, and response to our needs have been terrific. Our event presenter is BYK. They have been our presenting sponsor for the fifth consecutive year. Thank you, Allison, and your team at BIC. We're very appreciative of their support uh, today and throughout the year. We are also thankful to our additional event sponsors that have graciously stayed with our programming, even though we have transitioned to this virtual format. A big thanks to our speaker sponsor, TD Bank, our ward sponsors, Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare, Ulbricht Stainless Steels, Gaylord Specialty Healthcare, and Pat Munger Construction. Our event sponsors include ACES, Area Cooperative Educational Services, Quinnipiac University, Campco, Supply Corporation of New England, Record Journal, Outfront Media, and CapVid Video Productions. We would like to thank our 2021 Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce corporate sponsors who support us all year long. These sponsorships enable us to bring you events and programs throughout the calendar year. Please enjoy our new sizzle reel highlighting our sponsors who support the chamber at the highest levels. Thanks again. The Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce is grateful for the generous contributions of its strategic investors. Their generosity allows the chamber to continue to support its partners and programs of work. Introducing our premier partner, Allnex. Now presenting our star supporters, Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare, Newcore Steel Connecticut, and Ulbricht Stainless Steels. Introducing our corporate sponsors, American Eagle Financial Credit Union, BYK USA, Ferguson and McGuire Insurance Services, Image 360 Wallingford, Inframetals, Camco Supply Corporation of New England, Lipper International, Platinum Janitorial Services, Record Journal, and South Broad Paint and Home Center. Now presenting our business partners, AMS Practice Management, Banton Construction Company, Choke Rosemary Hall, Comcast Business, Mezzanotti Law Firm, Newtown Savings Bank, One Source, United Illuminating, and United Property Restoration Services. The Chamber would like to thank each of our strategic investors for their contributions throughout the year and for helping us achieve our mission. And thank you to Gary and Capvid for putting together that video for us. At this time, I would like to introduce our speaker sponsor representing TD Bank, Commercial Market President for Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Southeast Massachusetts, Mike LaBella, who will introduce our keynote speaker, Lieutenant Governor Susan Beisowitz. Mike, good morning, good afternoon, and uh, thank you for joining us and for sponsoring this great event. Oh, thank you, Garrett, good afternoon. It's our pleasure at TD to once again be a, a supporter of all the great work being done at the Quinnipiac Chamber and today's Women's Achievement Awards program. I'd like to extend my thanks to you, Gara, and your tremendous team at the Chamber for continuing these important and informative programs. 
I'd also like to especially congratulate all of today's winners for their outstanding contributions to our region, especially in these difficult times. Yeah, on a personal note, and I don't usually do this, but I would also like to thank my fellow bankers attending today. You know, in normal times, we're competitors, but now we're all working together to continue our support of small businesses with both the second round of PPP funds and also the forgiveness portion of the first round. There's a lot of hard work being done to support this critical segment of our economy. It is now my great pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Lieutenant Governor Susan Weisowitz. Sworn in on January 9th, 2019, Susan Weisowitz is serving her first term as Connecticut's 109th Lieutenant Governor. Lieutenant Governor Weisowitz formerly served as Connecticut's Secretary of the State and as an elected representative from the 100th District to the Connecticut General Assembly. Since its inception in January of 2019, Lieutenant Governor Weisowitz has been instrumental in leading the newly created Council on Women and Girls, co-chairing the Subcommittee on Economic Opportunity and Workforce Equity. She has also formed a strong partnership with the Women's Business Development Council, holding virtual conversations to advance the cause of women-owned businesses in Connecticut. Please join me in welcoming Lieutenant Governor Susan Bysowitz. Well, thank you so much and good afternoon, Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce, the Greater New Haven Chamber of Commerce, and our distinguished guests, the recipients of this year's Women's Achievement Awards. Such an honor to be here with all of you today, albeit virtually, to recognize and celebrate the positive impact that our women-owned businesses have had on our economy, our local communities, and our residents. Today's honorees embody the very best of Connecticut. They embody our ingenuity, our innovation, our generosity, and our compassion. Each of these women have helped to break down barriers. They've helped to forge new paths They've stepped up to lead during uncharted and challenging times. Through these challenging times, female leaders like Nanette Pastore of Pierce Real Estate, Sherry Helgut of C. Cowles and Company, Evelyn Rossetti Ryan of Area Cooperative Education Services, Lorraine Cullen of Gaylord Specialty Healthcare, Emily Walter of the Wallingford Family YMCA, Anne Colette of Masonic Care and Samantha Williams of Sam's World LLC have showed us not only how to survive, but to thrive during this public health emergency. Today's honorees represent the diversity of Connecticut's economy from real estate to education, to our healthcare system, to our manufacturers, to our community organizations and nonprofits and content developers. You ladies are paving the way and helping to shatter glass ceilings everywhere. So congratulations to our woman of the year, Nanette Pastore. During her 25 plus years at Pierce Real Estate, Nanette has shown how hard work, determination, and a strong work ethic can pay off. She first started as the senior office administrator and has risen through the ranks now holding the title of president of Pierce Real Estate. She leads by example and has always found ways to give back to her community, especially during the height of COVID-19 when our residents needed us the most. Thank you for all that you are doing and I can't think of a more deserving recipient of this year's Woman of the Year Award. We wouldn't have made it through COVID without our healthcare heroes. Our nurses, doctors, assisted living care providers, first responders, and our frontline workers who've sacrificed so much, including their time with their own family members to take care of our loved ones. No uh, amount of words can express the gratitude that the governor and I have for everything you have done to keep us safe and healthy during this public health emergency. And that's why I'm so honored to recognize Ann Collette, Vice President of Strategy and Business Development for Masonic Care, as this year's Outstanding Innovator. 
and Lorraine Cullen, Senior Director of Clinical Services for Gaylord Specialty Healthcare as the recipient of the Excellence in Healthcare Award. Congratulations to both of you and thank you so much for everything that you and your colleagues are doing to help us defeat the spread of COVID-19. During this pandemic, our community organizations and nonprofits have served as a lifeline to so many families across the state. As the Child Care Services Director for the Wallingford Family YMCA, Emily Walter serves nearly 500 children per day from infants and toddlers to preschool and school age children through grade eight. These services were even more critical as many of our schools transitioned to remote learning during the height of the pandemic. We relied on our community partners to help make sure our children have the resources they needed to excel in their academics while at home. Congratulations to Emily Walter for receiving this year's Emerging Leader Award. Years ago, I had the opportunity to work with Dr. Evelyn Rossetti Ryan uh, when we both were summer interns for the city of New Haven. It is now my honor to be here with you today to recognize you as the recipient of this year's Excellence in Advocacy Award. Over the years, um, you have worked tirelessly to support adults with developmental and physical disabilities, with job training, placement, rec and recreational activities. Your work has helped to make a positive impact on the greater New Haven community. Evelyn, thank you for all that you are doing. For more than 175 years, C. Cowles and Company has been a fixture in the greater New Haven community. And Sherry Helgut, the manufacturer's director of human resources is making sure it remains that way by finding top tier talent and focusing on ways to create a workplace environment that allows employees to thrive. It's always so exciting to see women hold positions in fields that are mainly dominated by men. Congratulations, Sherry, on receiving this year's Excellence in Business Award. I hope your story inspires other women to pursue careers in the high paying and high skilled manufacturing field. Last but not least, congratulations to Samantha Williams, owner of Sam's World LLC, for receiving this year's Community Impact Award. I've had the pleasure of meeting Sam over the summer as we marked Black Women's Equal Pay Day with State Representative Robin Porter, and we discussed ways to lift up more women workers and how to close the gender pay gap and how to make our workforce more inclusive and equitable. From her work as a content engineer to her work with organizations like the Black Business Alliance and Arts in Connecticut and the Women's Business Enterprise National Council, I know this is something Samantha is working toward every single day. Keep changing the world one word at a time, Samantha. Congratulations to each of you on this amazing accomplishment. The governor and I couldn't be more proud of the work that you do. And today we are reminded of just how significant women are to supporting families, serving our communities and the economic success of our state. According to our own Economic and Community Development Agency, over the past two decades, Connecticut's women-owned businesses have grown by 56%. Together, these businesses contribute more than $16 billion each year to Connecticut's gross state product. And it's because of women like you. You are the engines that keep our economy running and growing. From businesses large and small that make up our vibrant downtowns and main streets to our biggest corporations, women are leading across the board, but we have so much more work to do. Women make up 50% of our nation's workforce. However, only 24% of the STEM workforce are women. High skill and high wage careers in the STEM fields are in high demand, but too often women are vastly underrepresented in these fields, resulting in a very large gender gap. That needs to change. That's why since taking office, 
I have been incredibly focused on advancing priorities for women and families because at their core, women's issues are economic issues. One of my top priorities was to spearhead in partnership with our governor, Ned Lamont, the establishment of the Governor's Council on Women and Girls, which brings together leadership from across the state to meet the needs of women and girls. The council is charged with focusing on four areas of impact, education and STEAM, economic opportunity and workforce equity, leadership and health and safety. And our work has made Connecticut one of the most female friendly states in the nation, according to Wallet Hub. We've recruited 22 senior level executives from some of Connecticut's largest companies, including several Fortune 500 companies to serve on our state's corporate leadership circle that will work to help advance the goals of the Governor's Council on Women and Girls. Last March, we also announced that 10 major private sector companies in Connecticut signed on to the Paradigm for Parity Pledge, a nationwide coalition of businesses committing to achieve gender parity in the leadership of their respective companies over the next 10 years. These companies include Boehringer Engelheim Pharmaceuticals, Cigna, CVS Health and Aetna, Eversource Energy, Frontier Communications, Key Corp, Key Bank, Stanley Black & Decker, Synchrony Financial, The Hartford, and UTC. This year, we hope to encourage more Connecticut-based companies to take the pledge and help us achieve gender equality. Because in the 21st century, women should not be earning less than their male counterparts. For every dollar a white man makes, a white woman makes 77 cents, a black woman makes 62 cents, and a Latina woman makes 55 cents. Those lost wages leave women in positions where they are less able to support themselves and their families, save and invest for the future, and spend on goods and services. But to change that, it's gonna take all of us working together to address the systemic discrimination women had faced in the workforce. And that starts with all of us here. Help us create real change by giving more women the opportunity to succeed, pay equal pay for equal work. And if you are a woman in a STEM field, mentor a young girl and encourage her to pursue an education or career in science, technology, engineering, or math. Because we give our young girls inspirational figures to follow in the footsteps of, we can show them that if someone who looks like them can become the first female astronaut or pilot, groundbreaking chemist or pioneering physicist, they too can achieve their dreams. While we are here to celebrate seven female leaders who have been agents of change, we must also recognize the toll 2020 has taken on our business owners. Since the start of the pandemic, I've crisscrossed the state to see firsthand the impact of COVID-19 on our small businesses. Women-owned businesses statewide have been disproportionately impacted by the pandemic. I'd like to say we're in a she session. Of the 60,000 Connecticut businesses that secured federal loans for COVID relief, an overwhelmingly majority were male. 78% uh, were white owned, 84% uh, were male owned, according to the Women's Business Development Council. That's why I've partnered with the Women's Business Development Council and the Department of Economic and Community Development to launch a new COVID-19 relief program designed to provide much needed cash grants to women entrepreneurs disproportionately impacted by the pandemic. Yesterday, we announced our equity match grant program, which will be administered by the Women's Business Development Council, and it will aid entrepreneurs in accessing the capital they need to build banking relationships with improved credit and overcome challenges related to the pandemic. Together, I worked with the Women's Business Development Council to raise more than $500,000 in funds, uh, which were matched 
dollar for dollar by the State Department of Economic and Community Development. Funds from this equity match grant program can be used to purchase critical business assets such as personal protective equipment uh, or to pivot to an online business model which will help companies increase revenue and improve cash flow. This funding will help ensure that our women owned businesses come out of COVID-19 stronger than ever. We can't get through this public health emergency unless we are all united in our mission to defeat the spread of the virus and rebuild our state to be more inclusive and equitable. We know that businesses and all levels of government make better decisions when a set of diverse voices are at the table. Since taking office, our administration has appointed a record-breaking number of women and people of color to run our various state agencies. Under our administration, nearly 50% of our commissioners are women and 40% of them are people of color. The more we recognize and embrace our diversity, the more our state will thrive. And ladies, this will come as no surprise to you, but studies show that public companies with female CEOs or CFOs are often more profitable and have better stock performance. Despite these statistics, only 37 companies on 2020's Fortune 500 list are led by women. That's still only 7.4% of the Fortune 500 ranked businesses compiled annually by Forbes magazine. But even though women are making significant strides to break through, there's still a lack of racial diversity. Nearly all of our CEOs are white. Only three of 2020's Fortune 500 female CEOs are women of color. And that's why it's up to us to use our power to make sure that there are more women on corporate boards and in high ranking positions. And I know I'm looking at some future Fortune 500 leaders in this virtual room right now. I'd like to leave you all today with a powerful quote from our first female Black and Asian American Vice President, Kamala Harris. And she has said, our unity is our strength and our diversity is our power. It is my great pleasure to join you today to celebrate the, this year's honorees. Thank you all for what you are doing to keep your businesses running during these difficult times. It's an honor to represent you every day in Hartford, and I can't wait till we can celebrate in person together. And hopefully that day will be very soon. Thank you so much for having me. Thank, uh, Susan, thank you so much. Uh, there was no one more fitting uh, to speak at this event because of the amount of work that you've done supporting women in business and uh, supporting business overall. I think I've seen you, this is our third time in the last couple of weeks, going around the state supporting business. And great to hear what you're doing with Fran Pastor and the Women's Business Development Council and DCD as well. That's an incredible project. Thank you so well, much. Yes, and please encourage your members to apply for those grants. They're not loans, they're grants. Excellent, excellent. Grants is the key right now, everyone. That's what we need, so thank you. It's now time to start our award presentations, and I want to welcome in Liz White, publisher and executive vice president of the Record Journal, to present our Community Impact Award. Liz? Hi, everyone. Um, can you see me, Garrett? I'm not sure if I'm up on the screen now. There yes. we go. Yep, okay. Thanks so much for having me here today. Um, uh, Samantha Sammy, uh, or Sammy as she's known, is a distinguished content engineer with over 20 years of executive level corporate and professional writing experience. She is also recognized, a recognized business coach and social media manager who is committed to supporting and building the local community. As an astute businesswoman and serial entrepreneur, Sammy has launched several companies, including Sam's Word, Melanated Business Coaching, and 628 Digital Design, launching in February 2021. Sammy is the co-founder and president of the Collaboration of Minority Women Professionals, CMWP, with a mission to increase the visibility, capacity, and business profitability of professional minority women. CMWP was started in New Haven in 2018 and has grown to be a national business resource for Black and minority women. 
Sammy sits on the board of directors for the Black Business Alliance, BBA, and Arts in Connecticut. Sammy is also a member of the Quin Quinnipiac and Hamden Regional Chamber of Commerce. Please welcome Samantha Williams. Hello, everyone. How are you? Um, thank you, Liz. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, Mayor Dickinson, First Electman Frida, and Lieutenant Governor Biskowitz, and all of our sponsors. Thank you so much. Also, thank you to the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce, Garrett, Gary, and Maribel for presenting me with the 2021 Annual Women's Achievement Community Impact Award. As a micro, small, minority business owner of Sam's Word, Melanated Business Coaching, and 628 Digital Design, I understand firsthand the needs of the local community as it impacts individuals, families, and small businesses. In the past few years, I've become extremely active and vocal in the New Haven community to help drive transformative and innovative change that resonates with the members in the community and also implement programs and initiatives to help improve the socioeconomic footprint of the residents and businesses in the New Haven community. As the founder and president of the Collaboration of Minority Women Professionals, I've witnessed the power of community while hosting monthly lunch and learn networking events at minority owned businesses in the New Haven and Hampton communities. In these events, black and brown women, business professionals and business owners throughout the community engage, collaborate and develop thriving relationships and partnerships. And as a board member, for the Black Business Alliance, which was founded by Howard Hill and is now led by Anne-Marie Knight. I remain deeply committed to implementing and executing economic development initiatives that effect viable change throughout the Black community in Connecticut and beyond. I served as the entrepreneur in residence with the New Haven Free Public Library in 2020. As a community business mentor, I work directly with local entrepreneurs and business owners, providing them with advice, guidance, and insight about navigating the various challenges they face in starting and operating their businesses, especially as many of them were significantly and negatively impacted due to COVID. But through twice a week community-based office hours and weekly informational presentations focused on the unique small business needs, I was proud to encourage, motivate, and empower so many community members to start or continue their businesses. Also, as a guest writer for the University of Hartford's Entrepreneurial and Women's Business Center, me and my team, we create quarterly minority-focused articles that highlight the interests of minority women readers. Now, I'm the program manager for Knownpreneurs Growth Lab, which is based out of Known Coworking in New Haven. While developing this BIPOC-focused entrepreneurial training and mentorship cohort, I understood the importance of recruiting Black and Brown business owners and thought leaders to facilitate the 16-week curriculum, which focuses heavily on the needs of the BIPOC and minority business community. I look forward to continuing in this role and others to assess the needs of the local small business community I thank you again for this award. It's actually the first I received and Susan is always so great to see you. It means a lot to me. So thank you everyone at the Greater New Haven Chamber and the Quinnipiac Chamber. Thank you to my family and friends who are able to join and watch today. Thank you. Sammy, thank you and congratulations. You do such great work and we are always so proud to be able to partner with you. Keep it up. Um, let me now welcome in Karen Del Vecchio, Business Development Executive at Pat Munger Construction, to introduce our Emerging Leader honoree. Karen? Hi, thank you, Gary. I'm really happy to be here today representing Pat Munger Construction. We're a commercial and industrial general contractor located in Brantford, and we serve a variety of industries and we provide a variety of services. And while we're located in Brantford, we have a lot of customers that are in the North Haven Wallingford region. So we're really happy to be a part of this event and also happy to support the important work that the chamber does. I think especially during COVID, 
Um, chambers have been vitally important to, to the, and the support of their business community. And I think the reason for having this event, I couldn't have said any of it any better than our Lieutenant Governor did. It's great to be here recognizing women that are making a difference um, in our community and in our state. Um, I've been with Munger a little over two years and I think the very first Quinnipiac Chamber event I went to was this event. So even though we're doing it virtually, I'm happy to be a part of it. And also really happy to present the Emerging Leader Award. I think you know there are nonprofits, especially those really serving the neediest in our communities have done yeoman's work through, through COVID. So I'm really happy to be here for this award and recognize Emily. So Emily has been a Y kid for as long as she can remember. When she was in the third grade, she started in the Y's before and after school program. And her family was recognized as the Wallingford Family Y Family of the Year. At 14, she was working birthday parties, teaching swim lessons, and was a CIT for the Y summer camp. Now as an adult, she's risen from part-time assistant teacher to the child care services director, serving close to 500 children per day. The depth of her programmatic oversight covers infants, toddlers, preschool and school age children through grade eight. In addition to the families she serves, Emily is also in charge of developing a staff of 75, and she has really earned the respect of her kids, their parents, and her employees. So not only has she worked at every level with the WISE child care programs, she was a participant herself, so she really knows a lot about what goes on. Emily is also involved in the community through her volunteerism with organizations such as Wallingford Elks Lodge, Holiday Forgiving, Masters Mana, and her, along with her efforts to help raise fundraise for the YMCA and its programs. Please help me welcome and congratulate Emily Walter. Hi, thank you, Karen. Thank you uh, to all of our guests and attendees today. I'm really honored to receive this year's um, Emerging Leader Award. I sincerely thank the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce for all the hard work and for recognizing women my, like myself in the community. Thank you to our event sponsors, everybody who made today possible. I've heard that leadership is not a position or a title, it's action and example. I'm fortunate to have had the influence of several great YMCA leaders throughout my career. Sean Doherty and Eric Skinner come to mind. Zig Ziglar said, a lot of people have gone further than they thought because someone else thought they could. When I started working for the Y at age 14, I had no idea the impact it would have on me and that I would make a career of it. But I honestly did believe that Eric did. Thank you for being my mentor, your support over the past two decades, and for helping me to step outside of my comfort zone. I'd also like to thank my staff, past and present. Each one of you has taught me something along the way and have helped to grow our childcare programs to what they are today. Lastly, I would like to thank my mother for being an amazing example of a strong woman in leadership. Every day, you are my inspiration to be the best version of myself. Thank you again. I'm really honored to have this award. Congratulations to the rest of the recipients. Thank you, Emily, and congratulations to you. Let me now please welcome in Tom Curtin, Global HR Director at Ulbrich Stainless Steels to introduce our Excellence in Business honoree. Good afternoon, Tom. Thank you, Garrett. Great to be here. It's my honor and pleasure to present Sherry Halgett with the Excellence in Business Award. Sherry Halgett has served as Director of Human Resources for C. Cowles and Company in North Haven since February of 2015. In this position, Sherry is responsible for all human resources functions, including management, recruiting, benefits, and labor relations for all three of C. Cowell's operating divisions. In addition, Sherry serves on the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors and the Greater New Haven Chamber of Commerce HR Council. Sherry serves on many national and state committees. Sherry is a highly motivated and results-driven professional. She has over 20 years of HR experience, including manufacturing, property management, construction, and retail. She is a firm believer in getting to know all employees. She promotes strong core values and strives to make Sea Cowles an enjoyable and welcoming workplace for all. She thrives on problem solving and combining her interpersonal and communication skills to aid in the success of the company. 
She's also a personal friend. I've always enjoyed working with her. So I'm very proud to, uh, to um, speak on behalf of Sherry today. Let us congratulate her and please welcome at this time, Sherry Helgett. And we'll get Sherry up. There you are, Sherry. Okay. Can you see me? Yep. Okay. So hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me uh, here today. And first of all, I want to thank Garrett, Gary, and Maribel for all your work that you do within the community and allowing people like me to contribute as well. I also wanted to congratulate all the other award winners on their accomplishments. I'm a small town girl from Minnesota who grew up on a farm. If you asked me then if I enjoyed working in hog barns, corn and bean fields and raising chickens, I probably would have said absolutely not. Although it was not my childhood of choice, I look back now and realize everything happens for a reason. I truly understand the meaning of hard work and it soon became second nature to me. If I wanted something different or more out of life, that it was gonna be up to me to make that happen. I threw myself into sports and became very competitive in basketball, volleyball, and golf. And before I knew it, I was off to college in Northern Minnesota and into the working world. My career started in retail, managing a specialty store and had an opportunity to become a buyer, which took me to New York City. Yes, that was a huge culture shock uh, for me and now realizing really how big the world really was and I wanted more out of life. Before long, I was moving to the East Coast, working for Filene's department store for over 10 years. And that's where I found my true love for human resources. Since then, I've had some wonderful career opportunities and work with many outstanding mentors, all which led me to see Coles and Company, a truly family owned business where I feel that my hard work over the years has paid off and that I've been able to make a true difference. I believe that with integrity, perseverance, and communication, we can all be successful in our business and also in our personal lives. I wanted to thank my owner, Larry Moon, my president, Rich Lyons, and my VP of Finance, Russ Spector, for welcoming me into their management team six years ago and allowing me to help grow their business. In addition, I wanted to thank my mother, my husband, John, and my son, Connor, for always being by my side and helping me be who I am today. My mission in life and career has always been to help people and make a difference. I love my job, coworkers, and my employees, and I feel humbled and honored to accept this award. Thank you very much, uh, and congratulations to everyone. Thank you, Sherry. Uh, very well said, and we appreciate all of your support and volunteerism with the Chamber of Commerce. Let me now welcome in Frank DeCristina. He is the site manager at Allnext and also the board chair of the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce, and he will introduce our excellence in advocacy honoree. Frank. Thank you, Garrett. Hello, everyone. As board chair, I'd be remiss if I didn't take a moment to thank Gary and Maribel for their continued efforts during these unprecedented times. They continue to organize and execute the business of the chamber like no one else. And this celebration is just another example of their hard work. Great job, Gary, Maribel, Garrett, and the rest of the Greater New Haven team. Now to our honoree. Dr. Evelyn Rossetti Ryan is Chief of Outreach at and Access for Area Cooperative Educational Services, or ACES as we most of us know it as. Evelyn joined ACES in 2010 where she has served in several capacities, including grant writer, communications director, and secretary of the ACES Educational Foundation. Evelyn and her team support adults with development and physical disabilities with job training and placement. And we benefit that from that here at Allnex as we have used their services for many years very proudly. Her team is in the process of rebranding the ACES Shine program, creating work opportunities for adults, who provide a valuable service to our commuters while earning a paycheck. A New Haven native, Evelyn spent many years in New York where she served as executive director of the Westchester Italian Culture Center. 
Children's Museum of the Arts, and Thyroid Head and Neck Cancer Foundation. Evelyn earned a doctorate and master's from Teachers College and Bachelors of Arts from Columbia University in New York City. Please welcome my dear friend, Dr. Evelyn Rossetti Ryan. Thank you very much, Frank. And thank you for that wonderful introduction. It's terrific to be here today and I'm just awed to be with so many incredible women and uh, really want again, give hats off to Gary and to Maribel for all you're doing for the chamber and to Garrett and to you, Frank, for your incredible leadership of the Greater New Haven Chamber of Commerce and the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce. I truly believe that there's no greater honor than to be recognized by one's peers. And this award both humbles and inspires me. I am so very blessed to work for ACES, an agency dedicated to transforming lives through education, through innovation and leadership. As chief of outreach and access, I get to live this mission every single day. Our access program serves over 130 developmentally and physically disabled adults who range in age from 21 to 75. We enable them to live full and productive lives through vocational training, job placement and enrichment activities. And I'd like to recognize and thank all next, thank you, Frank, um, as one of our partnering companies. We work with several companies throughout the New Haven area. And as Frank mentioned, we are launching our ACES Shines, which will be a mobile shoe shine unit, uh, which can come to a, a business near you. And I hope you'll, you'll find out more information about that. Our outreach work extends beyond the ACES campus to encompass the greater New Haven community. Since 2020, our warm hands and warm hearts clothing drives have provided over 4,000 articles of clothing to homeless shelters throughout the area. And our numerous food drives have provided thousands of meals to area food pantries. I look forward to joining with my outstanding team and colleagues here at Access, as well as my outstanding colleagues on our executive leadership team, Dr. Thomas Danahy, our executive director, Tim Howes, William Rice, Olga Samoas, and um, last but not least, Steve Cook, to continue to advocate for, to support, and to nourish all those in need. I'd like to congratulate my fellow honorees and thank you again for this wonderful award. Thank you, Evelyn, and uh, congratulations. Evelyn and, and I were uh, neighbors uh, several years ago, and then we came back together uh, here through the chamber. And so it's great to see you receive this honoree and uh, very well deserved, Evelyn. Um, let me now welcome in Carla Natali, Associate Vice President for Events and Community Partnerships at Quinnipiac University to introduce our outstanding innovator honoree, Carla. Thank you, Garrett. I am very thrilled and honored to be presenting this award to Anne. Anne's career in healthcare began at the patient bedside. A certified respiratory care practitioner, Anne gained valuable experience working with critically ill patients in the intensive care units at Waterbury Hospital Health Center. She climbed the ranks, assuming a supervisory role, and after eight years, broadened her horizons, leading acute care for an opportunity in post-acute care. Today, Anne is Vice President, Strategy and Business Development for Masonicare, where she is a member of the senior management team, working to develop and implement new and innovative strategies to position the organization for sustainability and growth. Anne also oversees the company's award-winning marketing communications and public relations team. Please welcome Anne Colette. Hello, everyone. Hi, Anne. Thank you, Carla, and good afternoon. Uh, first, let me start by thanking the uh, Chamber of Commerce for this outstanding opportunity. Uh, I'm just humbled, and I um, almost am at a loss for words, although my CEO would tell you that that's never really the case. Uh, thank you to our Lieutenant Governor, Mayor Dickinson, and all the sponsors and supporters of today's event. Uh, last year, I had the opportunity to attend this event in person uh, with, with our CEO, and I was 
um, amazed at this event, but never did I ever dream that I would have the opportunity to be the recipient of, of such an award. Uh, I have to congratulate the outstanding women that are being recognized today. Um, again, humbled and honored to be among all of you. Thank you uh, to my colleagues and my team members who are my inspiration every day. Uh, they are the ones who nominated me for this recognition and I'm blessed to be surrounded by some of the most talented and passionate professionals in the field of senior living and healthcare. Um, this has been my life's work and I've had the opportunity to work with many incredible people uh, over the course of my career, but uh, none like the, the folks that uh, are here at Masonic Care who are driven by a mission to serve. A few words about innovation. It has been said that a pile of rocks is just that until someone decides to see it as a cathedral. Innovation is not just about new ideas, but it's about thinking about old ideas in a new way. At Masonic Care, innovation is the core value that has been a driving force behind this organization for 125 years. Steve Jobs stated that innovation is what distinguishes leaders from followers. And it is a driving force behind all that we do here at Masonic Care. This past year has been tough, but it's been a year in so many ways where we have seen people stand up and, and become the very best that they, they, they could be to serve, to give. Masonic Care has used innovation in so many different ways to elevate our business and provide care for those that we serve, but I, I've never seen innovation like I've seen this year. The innovative spirit displayed by our frontline workers um, has been just absolutely just second to none as I've watched them looking for ways in which they could serve their residents and families through every possible means, making sure that people were connected through technology, making sure that visits during lockdown were happening, Innovation was key to our survival during one of the darkest times in our career. Innovation cannot exist without inspiration. And for me, my inspiration comes from the residents that we serve. It comes from the frontline workers who are out there every day doing what they do best. It comes from my colleagues who are so talented and creative and are constantly seeking solutions to complex problems in today's business. And it comes from leaders like all of you who continue to pave the way for a healthier tomorrow. I remain completely humbled in a day and age that we now exist in where we are struggling with a pandemic um, to be receiving recognition like this because to, to be honest, the, the heroes out there um, that we are working to serve and support every day are some of the most innovative folks that I, I, I've ever known. Um, but with that said, um, I will, will put this out there. Masonic Care and, and many, many other healthcare leaders out there um, have had to rely heavily on innovation to keep us central to, central to, to our healthcare system. And I think that with that, um, you know, I need to extend my heartfelt thanks and gratitude to pioneering leaders like J.P. Vinoy my CEO, who took a chance on me four years ago. Um, he brought me into Masonic Care and uh, said, let's go, we've got work to do. And uh, we, we sat down together with a team of collaborators and creatives and have continued to work to move this organization forward and to continue to drive our mission forward. So uh, thank you to my marketing team, my collaborative team, my creatives, uh, partners, and um, all of my, my senior team uh, colleagues out there who each and every day inspire me to come to work and think differently and um, help continue to move this great organization forward. Thank you, Ann. We appreciate it and congratulations. Let me now welcome in Tara Knapp, who is Vice President of External Affairs at Gaylord Specialty Healthcare. And Tara is going to introduce our Excellence in Healthcare honoree. Tara? Thank you. Thank you very much, Garrett. Um, I am delighted to have this opportunity to introduce our next awardee. Uh, she is a colleague of mine at Gaylord and very deserving. Gaylord Specialty Healthcare Senior Director of Clinical Services, Lorraine Cullen, is responsible for developing and managing the continuity, quality, and efficiency of patient care, programs, 
research, and growth strategies across Gaylord's service lines. A respiratory therapist with more than 25 years of experience, Lorraine was promoted to Senior Director of Clinical Services in 2020. Under her leadership, she successfully manages and continues to develop Gaylord's inpatient telehealth program and has been tasked with developing the Office of Integrative Medicine, a new collaboration for wellness and holistic care for both patients and staff. A staunch believer in the power of research to affect positive outcomes, she currently acts as lead researcher and primary author on a recent research article on Gaylord's COVID-19 response. Please welcome Lorraine Cullen. Good afternoon and thank you. Congratulations to my fellow Women's Achievement Award winners and all of the exemplary women in our region. And thank you for, to Susan Bysowitz. It's an honor to have you here with us today. I am humbled to be recognized by the Quinnipiac Chamber with the first ever Excellence in Healthcare Award for something I am truly passionate about, helping people regain their lives after catastrophic injury or illness. As you can imagine, this past year has been one of the most challenging in my career. Gaylord has played an important role in the pandemic by caring for the sickest, most deconditioned COVID patients often who come to us directly from acute care hospital ICUs for intensive rehab and vent weaning. Keeping our staff safe as they treated others with the respiratory borne illness was my utmost priority, a challenge given the constantly evolving situation. Together with my team, protocols were carefully evaluated, protective resources were secured, and high-risk procedures, many of which fall under respiratory therapy, were closely scrutinized. The result was a plan that would ensure our team's safety, the best care for our patients, and a flexed up census that would support our acute care partners. To date, Gaylord has discharged more than 150 patients in need of rebuilding their lives after battling COVID. I can truly say that in spite of the stress of the unknowns, I have never been more proud to call myself a respiratory therapist. Knowing the departments I lead contribute to our patient's success is what drives me every day. Recently, the Record Journal interviewed me for an article about today's award. The reporter asked what I would like to say to women in the community. I was very nervous and I can't recall if I articulated my thoughts clearly, but after the interview, I gave this question much thought and I'd like to share my answer with you today. Always keep your eyes open for opportunity and dare to take chances. When I began my career, I thought that maybe someday in the future, I could become a department manager or a director but I assume this kind of opportunity wouldn't be available for decades to come. But as my experience grew, so did my aspirations. And when a supervisory position became available, I felt I was ready for the challenge. But there was a small problem, literally a very small problem, a brand new baby. I wanted to be a supervisor, but I also wanted to work part-time as a new mom. Surely I thought the two couldn't coexist, or maybe they could. So I decided I had nothing to lose, and I asked if the position could possibly be a job share. I didn't think this idea would fly, but my director at the time, Mary, thought it was a great idea and gave me the position and the tools to grow. Years later, when I was ready to transition to a full-time supervisory role, a position that was not available in that organization, Mary helped to find me the right job at a new organization, which was here at Gaylord. Today, I find myself doing things I never dreamed of doing, leading not only Gaylord's respiratory and radiology departments, but also taking a leadership role in clinical services throughout the organization and developing initiatives like our Office of Integrative Medicine and Research at Gaylord's new Mill Institute for Healthcare Innovation. I will never forget how my career path changed all because I took an opportunity, um, I took a chance on a seemingly far-flung opportunity. Throughout my career, I have been shaped and groomed by a number of women mentors like Mary who showed me the value of thinking differently. People like our Gaylord president, Sonia LaBarbera, who remains open to new opportunities and possibilities and whose leadership I strive to emulate. Thank you, Sonia, for being a strong mentor to me and to many others in our organization. Thank you also to my husband for his constant support and to my parents for their encouragement in any endeavor that I ever pursued. Opportunities are out there if you keep finding ways to make it happen. And I hope you seize them with persistence and creativity. Thank you again to the Quinnipiac Chamber, my colleagues, and my fellow honorees. 
Thank you, Lorraine, and congratulations. And that's a, that's a great, inspiring story for us all. Let me now welcome in Shannon Duncanson, sales executive at Harvard Pilgrim Healthcare, to introduce our Woman of the Year honoree, Shannon. Go ahead, Shannon. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Go right ahead. Oh, sorry. I just got kicked out of Wi-Fi and just back on. So thank you. So I am very thrilled and honored to be um, presenting and introducing our Woman of the Year honoree, Nancy Pastor. Nancy Pastor is president of Pierce Real Estate. She oversees and manages all the residential and commercial offices in Wallingford, Milford, North Haven, New Haven, and its shoreline offices in Branford, Guilford, and Clinton. With her knowledge, enthusiasm, expertise, and professionalism, Nanette also oversees the company's successful recruiting efforts. She is a 25 year plus veteran at, Real, at Pierce Real Estate. Nanette has steadily risen in rank and responsibility. She has also served on the board of directors for the New Haven Middlesex Association of Realtors and the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce. With her emphasis on service, she leads by example and is proud to say that her team of agents, of agents all play a part within her respective communities by donating time and expertise in various social market and town affairs. Please welcome Nanette Pastor. And Jeanette, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, to Lieutenant Governor Bicewitz, thank you for being here. Mayor Dickinson, First Selectman Frida, President Sheehan, uh, Maribel and Gary of Quinnipiac Chamber, fellow awardees and all of the sponsors for this event. I'm honored and I'm deeply grateful to be here today accepting the Woman of the Year Award. Thank you so much. Being a recipient of this prestigious award is uh, putting me in the company of distinguished prior award winners. It's a proud and humbling accomplishment. Congratulations to all of the other honorees here today for their extraordinary successes in their fields. I wanna thank the chamber for all it contributes to our business community. 2020, as everyone knows, has certainly been a year like no other. Many businesses and indeed towns have faced nearly insurmountable challenges and that has been very difficult to endure. Through it all, the chamber has been proactive in keeping our business community and especially our members informed, engaged and encouraged. The chamber has been extremely supportive with strategies and tools to navigate through and stay afloat in this stormy environment. So thank you for being an active support system for all of us. Pierce Real Estate has been like family to me for over 27 years. It's a company built with integrity, professionalism, and a profound commitment to community service. Our staff, our agents, I have been truly blessed. Our founder, Herb Pierce, and our CEO, Barbara Pierce, both have been strong community leaders and mentors to many. Pierce's contributions to charities, the arts, and other needy organization approaches legendary proportions. Herb and Barbara have been a true inspiration to me and have contributed to my advancement in so many ways. Pierce is in a symbiotic relationship with the Connecticut economy our company's philosophy has always been that we have a responsibility to give something back to those communities we serve because we make our living here with these communities. I truly believe we have had our share of contribution to make New Haven and its surrounding towns a better place. Pierce Real Estate depends on Greater New Haven to be an innovative and alluring place to live, work, and do business. And I say, we've succeeded in all aspects. Years ago, 
Herb always told me that I could accomplish anything I put my mind to. And Barbara, well, she has always seen my talent and the passion in me when I couldn't see it myself. I could not ask for two better examples of generous, intelligent, industrious models of the kind of person I hope I am today. Thank you again for this honor. And to everyone, I wish a successful, prosperous, and healthy 2021. Thank you, Nanette, and very well deserved. Uh, thank you for the support of the chambers that you provide and congratulations on this recognition. And congratulations to all of our honorees. Uh, I do wanna thank Gary and especially Maribel. Maribel is uh, oftentimes behind the scenes, but uh, she runs this chamber as much as anyone. Thank you for helping coordinate this event. Also Shantae Williams Monroe and Tamika Miller who are on the GNHCC staff who've been uh, running the slides behind the scenes and to all of the women who are involved in the chamber, not only in our staff, but also on our boards of directors for both chambers. Again, thank you to all of our honorees, our sponsors. Before we go though, we wanna recognize uh, the winners of our raffle and we have done uh, some random drawings. So I'm gonna read off the names and uh, when you hear your name, you can contact the chamber afterwards and we'll get those off to you. But the first is a $25 gift card to Body and Soul Day Spa in Wallingford. And the winner of that is Diane Romelli. Hope I got your last name right. Congratulations to Diane. The second prize is a $25 gift card to the Nail and Wax Room in Wallingford. And that is going to Mary Bush. And finally, our grand prize, this is a ladies watch from Arnold's Jeweler in North Haven, right there in North Haven. And the winner of that is Angela Rossetti. So congratulations uh, to all three of you and thank you for our businesses that provided these great prizes, especially Arnold's Jeweler. Please visit all three of them. And thank you again to our sponsors for today's event. We can only put on programming like this with your support. We really appreciate it. Uh, this is obviously this last entire year has been challenging, uh, but we've been able to make it through because of the businesses that support the chamber. And hopefully in doing so, we've been able to support many of the other businesses that are here in our community and help them get through. We will be holding our mayor and first selectman state of the town addresses on February 18th. This year, we're combining uh, Wallingford and North Haven into one event that'll be held at noon virtual format, again, where we'll hear uh, what's going on in both communities and how the recovery is going, vaccinations as well. It's free to sign up. You can go to quincham.com or just give Maribel a call at the office. Again, we hope you enjoyed today's presentation and celebration. I want to thank our keynote speaker, Lieutenant Governor Susan Beisowitz. We truly appreciate you all being here today. And thank you again to our sponsors who made this event possible. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thanks, everyone.